We are at the second OER World Congress and we are doing a little 101 on the global scene or community of OER. And one huge name when it comes to OER on a global level is the Commonwealth of Learning, which is not so much known in Germany, but we have to change this. And we are honored to have the president and CEO of the Commonwealth of Learning with us. Professor Asha Singh, thanks for taking your time and uh, explaining what the Commonwealth of Learning is, which in this context seems to me like a bit of a stupid question, but I think there are many people out there that should know about your work. Uh, thank you very much for having me on this. This is a good opportunity to tell you know, some other people about the Commonwealth of Learning. And uh, we are located in Vancouver, Canada. That's where our headquarters is. We also have a regional office in New Delhi for Asia. Um, we are an intergovernmental organization created by Commonwealth heads of government, which means we have the mandate to work in 52 member states that span all regions of the globe, right from you know the Caribbean, uh, Canada of course is a Commonwealth country, UK is a Commonwealth country, Malta and Cyprus in uh, Europe. The rest are in Africa, Asia and the Pacific. So it's almost covering the whole globe. And what we do is we use technologies for expanding access to education and training. And our uh, motto is promoting learning for sustainable development. And we believe that sustainable development cannot happen unless we do three things. You know, learning should lead to economic empowerment. Learning should lead to social inclusion so that we don't leave anybody outside development. And the third is learning uh, must also promote environmental conservation. So all these three things must come together. And we believe that because we work, you know, 46 countries are developing countries in South Asia, in Sub-Saharan Africa. And there are very acute problems of content even in schools. You know, in Cameroon, this is a report from UNESCO in 2012, 12 children in class two were sharing one textbook. In fact, for math, it was even worse. 14 students were sharing one math textbook. And parents have feel very bad when they can't give money uh, to the children to buy a textbook. So we believe that if we promote OER and if the governments adopt OER policies, then maybe textbooks will become cheaper and every student, every child will have a textbook in their hand, which is why we're very interested in promoting uh, textbooks because it's for inclusion. But it doesn't stop there. I mean, open content, open knowledge, access, you know, to the finest minds in the world also improves the quality. And we did a study in Antigua and Barbuda, which is a small Caribbean country. And in that college, we found that uh, every student per semester saved 64 Eastern Caribbean dollars by using OER textbooks. And even the quality of education improved by 5.5%. So I think quality, it has an impact on quality, it has an impact on um, uh, cost, it has an uh, impact on access that people who would not have... The other story I have is, you know, from Pakistan. Uh, in the mountains in Pakistan, remote mountains, the students had never seen anything beyond a blackboard. And they didn't have any access to good quality material. So what Call has done, you know, my organization, the Commonwealth of Learning, we've developed a small uh, device called Aptus. It's a small server, a wireless router, and a solar charger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're not connected to electricity, like the people in Pakistan were not connected to electricity, you can charge it with using the solar charger. And we put content from Khan Academy and all the other videos, you know, from Wikipedia for schools. And we trained the teachers on how to use that. And the children in the, in the secondary school had uh, tablets. Little device, you know, Aptus, it can actually create a local area network. So the students uh, using the tablet could download all this content and they were so excited because they had never seen somebody explaining through a video how the human body works. This was for the first time that they were seeing and within I think six months we could also see that the teachers were more motivated, 
the students were more motivated and they were more excited about coming to classes. So I think, how do we reach the remote communities? How do we reach people, you know, with free content, which people in California have in developed countries, but they will never have, but now they can have also. So I think this was our interest in actually promoting OER. May I ask you to promote the two reports your organization has just released? Oh, those are very good reports. You know, uh, before this Congress, we had six regional consultations in six regions of the globe. And UNESCO and Government of Slovenia were also partners. And these were funded by Hewlett Foundation. They were very generous in funding them. But my organization organized them. And the first, uh, of course, there was one in Europe. This was in Malta, hosted by the minister in Malta. So we also asked, uh, we gave surveys to governments. And we gave surveys to stakeholders, you know. 102 governments responded and 638 stakeholders responded. And based on that, based on the six regional consultations, we developed a report, you know, we consolidated all the findings. And this report is the global OER report, which is really state of the art right now, because it gives us a snapshot of what is happening in OER, what people are thinking, who are the stakeholders, what is the way forward, where are the gaps. I think that report is very good. So please share it. And uh, if it needs to be translated into German, it should be by some colleagues and friends because it's open license, openly licensed. We have also brought with that uh, another booklet, which is Actions. Uh, when we did the regional surveys, you know, this was in uh, Malta, in uh, Doha, in Qatar, in uh, Mauritius for Africa, in uh, Malaysia for Asia, in uh, Auckland, in New Zealand for the Pacific, and in Sao Paulo, Brazil for the Latin American and Caribbean regions. People identified who are the key stakeholders who should be doing something about taking OER forward. And they identified nine categories, you know, governments, institutions, librarians, teachers, students, associations. And then they identified actions for each uh, group. Governments must do this, institutions must do this, teachers must do this. And if they, and it's very easy because, you know, about, it's very user friendly. Uh, each of these nine categories has just a few actions. So I think that is very valuable because it actually pulls out the essence of people's recommendations to take forward. So I'll be very happy if you can, you know, promote it and bring it to the wider attention of the global community. Thank you so much for taking your time, for being with us. And for our views, I would like to suggest that you download the reports and um, follow the call on Twitter. And if there's anyone out there who wants to make a commitment on uh, the German translation, uh, let us know. We're happy to coordinate if there are several players out there who want to be part of the translation. would be great to know about it. Thanks again and all the best for your work. And thank you.